Hey everybody, today we're going to make some darts out of cane and uh, I'm going to be showing Charlie how to do it. He probably already knows how to do it, but I'm going to show you anyway. And, uh, and you guys out there in YouTube land can see how we do it. This is a piece of uh, Japanese arrow cane. It's about seven foot long. It's kind of crooked. But it's kind of straight too. It's a. It, I chose one that was nice and uh, nice and even, you know. And the the it doesn't weigh much. It's a little bit green still. I like them to to be a little bit more yellow than this when I when I make them. If you look at this one here, this one's a lot greener. So this one here is a little bit too green. Uh, this one here has been out in the sun for, you know two or three months it was picked earlier in the season. The Latin name for this is Pseudosasa japonica or japonica, depends on how you want to pronounce it. Japanese arrow bamboo. And where do you find this kind of? Well, this cane? this stuff came from up near the Okefenokee uh, swamp area, somewhere between Georgia and, and Florida. It grows a lot in that area. You just have to find stands of it and uh, it's it's around. Unfortunately, in the last couple of years, it's been starting to uh, um, seed out, and some of it is dying out. But there's other places where it's still good. If you find places where the stalks are nice and green and nice and healthy looking, that's that's where you want to get this stuff. You want to pick it in the middle of winter, and you want to stand it in the sun uh, for a few months. Just make little teepees out of them, you know. Put two or three dozen like this around. Keep them under cover, but in the sun, like on a back porch or something like that. And move them around a little bit so that the other sides get, all the sides get sunshine at one time or another. When they get um, seasoned enough, you want to store them indoors under cover. And then, and can you use just any kind of cane uh, for making darts, or is there a specific? type of bamboo or river cane that you found works better than others? Well, my favorite is uh, the Japanese arrow cane. Why? It's because it's uh, it's hollow, unlike Tonkin cane. Tonkin cane is very dense. And it, you know, a, a, a shaft like this with Tonkin cane is probably a third or even half again heavier. And if you use the American Arundinaria gigantea, if you use the American version, the river cane, th that has really big nodules here. They're, they're sometimes sticking out a quarter inch from the cane, and it doesn't make a very nice uh, dart for throwing it. it. You know, that causes a little bit of, a, I don't know, little eddies and stuff like that. And throwing it a nice straight shaft like this is is what I like. Not, not to say you can't make them out of... Uh, Americans, uh, you know, our indigenous material, but the Japanese stuff works better. I always like to start on the small end because it's the easiest end to straighten. And uh, I'll, uh, we can use both of these to heat it up with. You can do it with a torch like this. You don't want to burn the cane. You want to heat it by moving it back and forth. We'll, we'll probably try that thing because that might be better. I look right down at it like this and bend it straight. You have to be very careful not to over bend it. Be gentle. And I use a pulling motion when I bend it. I pull it. I'm pulling this way. And uh, that's pretty straight now. You can use a campfire or anything. So I'm rotating it, moving it back and forth. I'm looking at that little hump right there. See that little bump right th there, Charlie? And uh, I'm going to rotate it and get it nice and hot right there. If it starts to get uh, a little tiny bit burnt, don't don't sweat it. It's you know, these little burn marks here don't hurt anything. 
Okay, so you see the see that bend right there? I'm going to pull that out of it. The bend is right here. Okay, now if you notice this, that bend is no longer there. See, it's straight from here all the way to here. You see right here, there's a little elbow. I'm going to work that out next. Actually, I think I'm going to work on this, and then I'll go back to the elbow. See the little belly right here? So is it better to start at the end of the cane or the middle? or? Uh, I always start at the small end because it's easy. If you're going to make any mistakes at the small end, it happens fast, and and uh, you don't... You don't waste so much time if you if it breaks, you know. Plus, it gives you a foundation, you know, a beginning point. It's easy to get it straight, so you got a straight stick, so you bend the rest of the stick straight to the straight part, you know. Yeah, I can see it kind of coming together now on the end that you're straightening. Most of the curves look like they're more towards the and we haven't got to yet. Yeah. Do you need to go, will you need to go back and touch up after you've gone down the whole Yeah, that's, a, that's always necessary. Like this part here, I didn't get it hot enough right there so it didn't straighten, so I'm gonna go back and do that. Is it necessary to let the spots cool down completely um, before you heat them again? No. Okay, this time I'm going to heat this more precisely with this torch because I need it hot in one spot. Okay, there's still a little bit of a spot there. I'm going to ignore it for a little while and go to the next one. I'll go back to that. Uh, maybe that was your question. Yeah, sometimes you have to let it a part cool, uh, cool down so that you don't bend it back when you go to the next section, you know. I don't know if, if you've noticed my darts, the ones that I use for competition, they're dead straight. And this is how I did every single one of those. And they've, they've stayed straight for years without touching up, you know. Gentle as she goes, you know. You can see it's starting to become more straight all, all the way. Sometimes I, I use my knee as a, as a bending point like this, especially when it needs to be bent quite a bit around one little corner there. If you, if you notice, a lot of times I'm pulling on it and that seems to help straighten it also. Yeah, so my next, my next joint is this one here to straighten. I want to straighten this a little bit. It's being a little stubborn, so I'm going to heat it with this other torch. Yeah, that got that. So what are some of the signs that you've uh, heated the cane too much? It burns. <laughs> it gets black. Does it become uh, brittle at all to the bend? Yeah, especially if you overheat the, the nodes. If you if you overheat the nodes, it it they get very brash. They they're very brittle then. Because this this cane is a tiny bit green, um, if you overheat it, it'll pop. Sometimes, and and that pop is is a death knell to the to uh, the dart. It, 
if it pops and cracks here. So you don't want to overheat it, especially at this stage of the game, you know. If you if you actually have problems with with uh, with uh, steam popping, you can drill a little hole uh, inside these things here. And I, I don't really have the drill for that. I might be able to pop the pop through it with this. Just take the scissor and pop. Go in there and give it a little bit of relief. Works better with a drill. Can you see how that's getting much straighter? It isn't perfect, but it looks much, uh, as much straighter than it was when we started. Seems that slow, even heat also seems to be a yeah, yeah, patience, patience, and consistency, and and where what you're doing is really you really want the heat to yeah. almost like soak into the node rather than yeah. burn the outside of it. So back to this one here. I'm not sure when you're done with this, you know, because <laughs> straight is a, a relative term sometimes. I've seen some people throwing cane darts in the past that they weren't exactly straight. Uh, they seem to perform fairly well. Yeah, but straighter is better. It looks good too. It makes you feel good when your dart's straight. You are putting quite a bit of traction pulling back on it. Yeah. Rather than pull sideways on it, just bending it like that, if you pull, it stretches the, the fibers in the in the bamboo to uh, get it straighter. If you if you know what I'm talking about. I'm actually trying to make these fibers longer on that side. And here again, I, I have a kind of a kink here, and I want to I want to heat it in a very short span right there. So I'm going to use this torch. And back to this one here. I want to heat that one. What do you think, Charlie? Look at that. It's not done, but it's better. Looks pretty you straight. Think? You think it's straight enough for a dart? Oh yeah. Much better than this one. If you compare this one to that one, side by side, you can see that the natural straightness or crookedness of it is quite a quite different from the. You Un know. Unthrowable. Yeah, this would be unthrowable, but you could now yeah. throw that one. I, I think you'd agree with that. The next step, you can do it in, in many different ways, is to reduce this uh, this stuff here. The, where the leaves come out, there's little bumps right there. You want to clean those off. I believe there's a file in that. So do you want to wait to file those until after you straighten it? Well, after you straighten it, the, they become a little harder, a little crisper, and a little easier to, to do. So you want to get, get that little ridge filed off at that same time, you know? Is it okay to take a little bit of the node off if, uh, if you're breaking the leaves off and it does have a fairly large... Mm, no, I, it better to just leave it on. I would leave it on and file it off because if you break it off this way, the strength of it is damaged. At this point, uh, the 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 node, the little bumps on the sides of the nodes where the leaves come out have been. Uh, uh, filed off 
and there's a there's a very thin skin on the outside of the the dart or the not the dart but the bamboo that needs to come off it, it it's heavy and it doesn't create any strength there's nothing beneficial about having that little bit of skin on there and we found that if you scrape that off with a sharp knife that uh, I'm gonna start down here um, I, I'm gonna put the point on there so I won't do that part there but do you see the the little ribbon of skin that's coming off here that stuff is actually made out of silicon mostly silicon and it it's heavy but it doesn't it's it's a protective coating probably that insects can't eat through very easily you know that protects the inner bamboo the power fibers are under it there's no fibers there's no power fibers in the in this part in this skin so what's the main advantage of scraping that off is it you, more you weight? yeah you reduce the weight of it also um, it it helps the, the bamboo dry out the rest of the way and then when you do your final straightening in a few days it it straightens better and the other thing that I, I like about it is you get rid of the burn marks from from the straightening process. If you notice my really good bamboo darts, there's no skin on them at all. And I've really worked these nodes down. It's very smooth. And, you know, I probably spend more than twice the time that I'm doing now doing my own competition darts the end product wants to be a dart that's heavier on the front end than on the back end and the balancing point wants to be about here um, about I think they say 39% of the length of the dart and it, I my, my see right now it isn't it isn't there but we're gonna put a, uh, a point on here that's gonna weigh a little bit and and uh, that may change it a little bit. Sometimes I'll go to the trouble of actually drilling out this and putting some metal inside of here. It's uh, sometimes worth it to for getting your balancing point exactly exactly right. Do you want to try this? Yeah, I can give it a try. Yeah. It doesn't seem like a lot of weight is coming off of there, but it it does make a difference. I've weighed them before and after, and you can reduce the weight by about a half an ounce by scraping all that stuff off of the dart. There's a lot of surface area on the dart. It's only a, a half an inch in diameter here, but uh, pi times a half, half an inch is, uh, I don't know, one, about one and a half inches. If you were to flatten the dart out, that's a one and a half inch ribbon of of paper thin stuff that goes the whole length of the, the dart right if you want to do this in a more primitive way you might use a scraper like to do it easily or you could get even fancier and and scrape it down with a piece of very uh, rough steel wool that sort of works but I think I think it takes more work to do it with steel wool than anything. And I would suppose that lots of people already know how to make darts like this. I'm, I'm sure you and your dad have made a lot of darts. And, they, and my techniques are probably different than your dad's and your own techniques. Um, how, what, how, in what ways do, do you see that we do it different so well, far? Well, it's been years since I've uh, worked on making darts. But one of the techniques that uh, he had always showed us was... Uh, Starting uh, starting on the nodes here, and uh, as you heat the node, you would bend it on your leg. Yeah. Similar to the way you were bending in the air, but using your leg as a uh, fulcrum. Uh, fulcrum, yeah, for for bending it. And then, as you move down, you would actually skip a node, and you would go down to the next node, and you would straighten heat that up, straighten it. And yeah. when you came back, you would hit the ones that you 
it skipped. Yeah. Uh, one of the reasons for that was to allow the nodes to cool. You would skip a node so that you wouldn't reheat the same node and cause it to, to bend back. Yeah, or pop maybe. Yeah, because you, you really want to avoid overheating uh, from yep. what I can remember. Yep. I think that there's a lot of advantages to using cane over other materials. The problem is cane is uh, really time consuming. You have to find it, you have to come by it. Uh, you have to straighten them. And if you do yep. break them and then you're out, uh, there's a lot of advantages to wooden darts as well with the rigidness and the stability as we saw last night when we were fishing. Yeah. Uh, a, a, a flimsier dart doesn't work as well when you're shooting something that's three or four feet away. Yeah. Uh, you need that, exactly. that stiffness. The so mass. for hunting, hunting purposes, yeah, you get more mass and a little bit more rigidity seems to help with uh, the hunting situation. Yeah. So I brought some sandpaper. And uh, my favorite way to use the sandpaper is to fold it in thirds like this. Here, let me have that. I basically roll the sandpaper around the stick like this and, and give the, the dart a nice work over. This is 100 grit. Just to get the and this gets the rest of the, the skin off. And also, it works the nodes down nicely, you know, so they're nice and smooth. Another thing I do is at this very end here, because you need to make a, a knock, a, a knock dimple on, on the back of the dart, I, I rotate the dart this way to make grooves this way because Feel that because that allows you to wrap it with some fiber and create you know a, a swelling there that is a positive connection for the that little dimp the little hook that you're gonna hook in there and then I'll let it dry and we'll, we'll, we'll be doing that here in a few minutes but then I follow I follow that up with uh, First, we go to finer sandpaper. This is 220. It doesn't take long to sand a dart this way. Okay, and then the final buffing comes with the steel wool. Well, you can see how I get that polished bamboo look on my darts. A lot of people don't have it, don't do it that way. I don't yeah, know. I don't remember. Uh, I don't remember doing that step, but it seems to give it a really nice finish. It does. Well, I th because these have to slip through the air, they may as well be smooth, right? Do smooth things fly through the air better? I don't know. If it didn't, if it, if it wasn't so, then they'd make airplanes bumpy. <laughs> but check that out. Feel that and see if you think that looks... Oh, that's beautiful. Looks good. All right, so now that we got all the coating off, what's the next step? So um, let's just take a look at the straightness, and we're going to do a little touch-up straightening. you got to be very gentle with the application of heat. People who call up and ask me for bamboo darts, they don't realize how much work they're making me do. <laughs> I noticed that you can't quite see the change in color and the cane like you could before we scraped off that waxy coating. Yeah, yeah, I'm not getting it that hot this time. And you know, you like you were talking about, you, your dad skips every other node. I, I do something a little bit like that. I go from node to node, and then I go back and I get the belly in the bamboo, in the internodes, I guess. I don't know what you call the space in between nodes, internodes. It's like interstate, right? 
If we don't have a word, we'll just make one up. <laughs> when I get done with a dart, I'll roll it on the table and figure out whether it's really uh, nice and straight or not. You know, it, sometimes when you look down them, the the bending of the the dart, or the bending of the the weight of it actually bends the dart a little bit. I don't have a table here to roll it on, so we're just going to do it this way. There, it's much straighter now. Starting to look more and more like a dart than just a piece of bamboo. That's actually significantly straighter than it was. Now comes the cool part. I might be the only one that does it this way. This is silk. It's a silk hanky, they call it. And I'm just drafting some fibers off of this. See how they pull? They're very fine. They're almost like spider web. Check it out, Charlie. So the next step is putting some glue on this. This is hide glue. Hide glue and silk are both basically protein materials. And uh, as such, it, it, it makes a really strong bond. We'll add a little glue at a time. And I want to work the fiber so it gets fatter in the back. Usually when I get to this point, you can squeeze the, the glue into the, into the fiber. Wrap it around and just squeeze it in by twisting. See how it, the glue is completely saturated through the fiber. So now I'll add some more glue. it in there. I, I've seen many methods for this including putting a golf tee or whatever. I like this the best. This makes a really nice long-lasting secure knock dimple that won't split no matter how th hard you throw it it won't split the bamboo. When the glue hardens it, it's as hard as any protein materials get I think. A little more glue. You want to get that those fibers saturated. It it uh, it dries and becomes a solid. It's nothing like you know cloth anymore. <laughs> you know you wouldn't even know it was silk. That little bit of curl there is uh, will come off because I'm going to carve the the dimple into that with a sharp knife. Are you going to put a wood plug? There's no Inside. wood plug. There's no wood plug necessary. I'm just going to carve that out until the spur fits that really nicely, and uh, it, with the tip of a sharp knife, I'll carve that out and go maybe an eighth inch back into here, and this this becomes solid, so you, you don't need any wood in there. You know, it's not not necessary. I usually wait until this is totally dry, but it's I'm going to do it now. Uh, I'm, I'm making the knock dimple here. I'm just putting the tip of my my n knife in there, and I'm cleaning that that hole out. It doesn't matter that it's hollow because the spur will fit into that thing there. The edges are what count. You see how the it makes a nice little cone shape there. So the other side, we got to put a point on here, and uh, the kinds of points that I like are made out of copper. 